have acne scarring and I have a lot of it. It's all over my cheeks. You can see it. I might be wearing makeup, but you can see it. Still, it's all over this cheek. I have a fair amount of it right here on my chin and a little bit right up here on my forehead. So why? I write about this all the time on my blog. If you don't read my blog, shameless plug here, go read it at katesimmonsbeauty.com. Um, so it's gonna be about my acne journey. Um, it's definitely not a journey that is over by any means. I really am still dealing with this every single day. I woke up with another pimple right here this morning. Um, but I'm gonna tell you kind of how it started, where I'm at, and kind of how it got me to start creating, creating videos and creating a blog. In the spring of 2017, um, I remember one like Saturday, I think I was getting ready for work. Um, I worked at the mall in a city like 30 or 40 minutes away from where I lived. I was getting ready for work and I remember I had these like bumps right here in my cheek. They were just bumps and that was it. And I had this very specific thought like, Oh man, I hope I'm not one of those people who ends up having a lot of acne. I did not yet have a lot of like acne. I hadn't really in high school. I was pretty lucky then. Like, of course the pimple here and there, but like for the most part, I really hadn't had any. So, um, I remember having that very specific thought and, um, it was a judgmental thought. Absolutely. It was a judgmental thought. It was insensitive, but I was already like, so insecure about so many things about me. I hated my body. I hated my hair. I don't like the shape of my face. And I was like, please don't add this to the list, please. So over time, I developed a lot of acne, really concentrated here on my cheeks. And like, really that's where like the scarring comes from. This one right here is like an injury. And so is this one right here, but that's a long story. A lot of it. And I tried everything over that summer to try and get rid of this acne. It was painful. <laughs> it made my face hurt so, so bad. And I was so insecure. I tried as much high coverage makeup as I possibly could to try and get rid of my acne. And it was, ugh, it was awful. People at work kept asking me like, are you okay? Like, is your skin like, okay? And I was like, yeah, it just like, it hurts. It kind of sucks. Like, I don't know what, what to do. Um, and so I think a, a real turning point, uh, turning point in the wrong direction at this point in my story, um, there was a person who uh, I worked with. I worked with her and I worked with her husband, both in, in the office I was working at at the time on campus. Um, and she sold Mary Kay. Um, and I am not a supporter of MLMs, um, mostly because of this particular experience, but also a few other experiences I had um, in college. But um, basically she asked one day if, um, you know, she had like this photo project she was working on for her Mary Kay portfolio and she wanted to do my makeup, presumably because I had very bad skin at the time. It was, it was pretty poor. Um, so I ended up saying yes, because I felt like it was too awkward to be like, Hey, no, I don't want to do that. Like I'm too embarrassed. Like I was too embarrassed to say I was embarrassed of my skin. So, um, one Saturday morning, really early, I went to her apartment and she did my makeup and, um, it ended up making my skin burn. I broke out so bad. My whole face just burned so bad. Um, it hurt to like sleep on my face. Like it just, I had the worst reaction to it. And, um, if you have ever experienced someone who is a consultant for an MLM, um, you know, that <laughs> because I said yes to one thing, she was not going to leave me alone, but I am not the kind of person who likes confrontation. Like at all. I will avoid arguing at all costs. Um, so when she kept messaging me, asking me if I wanted to throw a party, asking me if I wanted to come do it again, asking me if I liked any of the products I used, asking if I wanted to add them to my wish list, like I just, I ignored her altogether and work 
I just, I don't think I worked the same shift as her, so we never really overlapped. And eventually she, um, her schedule just got to the point where she didn't work in the office anymore. It was just her husband, so it was a little less awkward on my part, which was nice. Um, but because of that, I had to go a few days without wearing makeup. I had to go a few days without washing my face because it hurt so bad from like the burning and whatever reaction I'd had to the product she'd used on my skin. Um, and I was so embarrassed. Like I just wanted to like put a hoodie on, pull the strings and like not let anyone see me. And it was so, 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 so embarrassing. And at this time I had met my husband. Um, we were just dating then, but I had met him and I was like, I didn't want to hang out with him when he was just my boyfriend because I was so embarrassed in my skin. Like. He really hadn't seen me without makeup and it was, it, I was so embarrassed. And at this time it was still pretty bad acne. It really hadn't evolved into just being scarring on my face yet. So shortly after that, I finally went to a dermatologist and I was like, I'm tired of this. Like, I'm so sick of having acne constantly. Like, I can't do this anymore. Like, it hurts my skin. And so... Um, the doctor I went to was amazing. He was great. I really don't have any complaints. This doctor took all of my complaints very seriously. Um, they helped me and talked to me about the treatment options and the one that I like. And the treatment option that I chose involved three different prescriptions. One was a pill called minocycline. And the other two were creams and there was a dapoline and oh, I can't remember the other one now clindamycin. It was adapalene and clindamycin. So I had started taking these and they had warned me that after about a week my skin would adjust and it would get pretty dry but if it did get dry that should only last for a few weeks, two or three weeks. Um, and then it will go away my skin will kind of find its balance and um, it'll really start to clear up. So I'd used it for about a week. I really hadn't noticed anything. My skin was a little tight because the um, the gels, the topical gels were pretty drying. But um, I was like, this is no big deal. I got this. Um, and then I remember one night, I think it was a Sunday night. Um, I The apartment I lived in, it was six bedrooms and there were six girls that lived there. Um, and then at the end of the hallway, was where our vanity bathroom area was. And I was standing in the vanity, but there were four sinks and they kind of like faced each other like this way. There was like a little area in the middle and I was standing at the sink over here and I was washing my face. I finished washing my face. I put the stuff on and I was using a, um, like a facial oil to moisturize my face. So I just would put some of my hands, kind of rub it together and then kind of put it over my face. And I put it over my face and it started just burning so badly and I was like crying I was just in tears because it hurt so badly and I didn't want to put like cold water on it because I knew water was gonna dry out my skin more and I didn't want to like put a fan on it because I knew a fan was gonna dry out my skin more too so I was like what do I do so um, I ended up like having to take some Tylenol and um, I ended up taking a frozen, like a, a, a cold washcloth and putting it into a plastic bag and holding it to my face because it was cold, so it helped the burning sensation, but it didn't dry out my skin more. Like I knew that putting just a washcloth on it would. Um, and it was awful. And for, and it only happened at night when I washed my face. Um, so for three weeks, my skin peeled and it um, burned. And the worst places on my skin were right here. I would, it would just get like really scaly and peel off during the day and right here around my eyes. And it was just, it was awful. Like it was genuinely some of the most painful things I've done because it was just all over my face and it hurt. Um, but after those weeks, my skin balanced out and I started to notice huge, huge improvement in the acne and the scarring on my face. Um, and I was excited and it worked for a while. I was probably on that prescription for about a year um, And I kept taking them and it was great. I it was great. I had no complaints about it um, And if you go to my YouTube channel my first couple of videos 
Um, my skin's super clear. Like in my very first video in the beginning, I'm not wearing makeup and there's nothing on my cheeks. It's totally clear. Um, but that did not, once I stopped taking the prescription, they were hormone based prescriptions and I was already taking two other hormone based prescriptions on top of what I was taking for my skin. So I did not, I just, they were making me feel crazy. Like taking all these hormone things, it was totally throwing my body off balance. I was gaining weight. I just didn't have any motivation. I was always tired. I was always hungry. Like it was just kind of throwing off the hormone balance in my body. Um, because I was taking um, anxiety medication that was hormone based and I was taking um, birth control at the same time. So all of that together was just like a hormone cocktail that I didn't like. So um, the one that I decided to stop taking was the one for my skin because I was like, you know what? My skin is really good. It's been really good for a long time. So I think like I'm good. And you know, I, if this is a good prescription, I shouldn't have to take it forever. Um, so I talked to my doctor and I got off the prescription and it came back and it came back in full force. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't the easiest thing, obviously. I had been wearing makeup to work, um, really because my skin had been really good then. And, um, so I was really self-conscious. I was working on a whole team of women and, um, one person in particular always felt like they needed to pointed out to me um, it just hurt my feelings a lot and it, it was it sucked it sucked a lot and I don't think she was doing it out of a malicious place like it was just something she commented on but the fact that someone had noticed it and pointed it out had really really taken a toll on me because I felt like I did right after that Mary Kay experience um so that that sucked so I have to back up just a little bit to finish up this Mary Kay <laughs> nightmare that I lived through. So the last apartment I lived in before um, I got married, last apartment I lived in um, in Rexburg in college with, with those other six girls, they were great. I really, really enjoyed my roommates, but one of them had ended up at a Mary Kay party for a friend. And lo and behold, the consultant was this woman that I had, I had dealt with and I had just kind of ignored her um, and if you've ever had an experience with an MLM person, you know that they just, they don't give up. They keep asking questions. They keep pushing, they keep pushing, they keep pushing. And so my particular roommate um, ended up, I don't know, I don't exactly know what happened, but this this Mary Kay consultant ended up with the um, impression that my roommate wanted to like throw a party, um, which, is a, which is just an MLM term basically, like trying to sign people up and trying to recruit people to the business. So um, she had gotten our phone numbers and so she texted me and was like, hey, guess what? Your roommate is gonna throw a party and like she really wants to invite you. But just prior to getting this text, um, she had come home and told us, she's like, hey, I'm so sorry. I felt like so pressured and cornered that like I just wanted her to stop talking to me. So I gave her you guys' numbers. I'm really sorry if she texts you. So she had texted me and I had just been like, no, thank you. I'm not interested right now, no thank you. And there were some some other messages exchanged between our other roommates, you know, there were six of us, so the five other girls there. Um, and they got not very nice between this, this particular consultant and my roommates, and really it just turned me off to the whole idea. Um, I started making videos because I was like, you know, I really, I've been through this acne journey, I know that it sucks, and I wanna help people. I want to help people learn how to do makeup. I want to make the videos that I was looking for when I was like 15. And so that's what I started doing. And then my acne started coming back and it started coming back pretty bad on my cheeks. Most of this is actually not acne. Most of this is um, scarring and pigmentation. So like if I take off my makeup, it's just a whole bunch of red dots, but they really aren't acne. Like I get acne very rarely now. Um, I don't take any hormone based um, prescriptions right now, which is beautiful, beautiful. I feel so much less crazy. Um, but so it's, it's much, much better now, but it's just scarring that I'm trying to help get rid of right now. And really for me, the best way is to drink water, eat healthy and stay active. Those are the biggest things I wear. Um, SPF every day under my makeup because it helps the, um, scar and not become more pigmented in the sun. I know a lot of people kind of feel the opposite. Like my dog just brought his like 
little towel in here, a little blanket. Um, a lot of people feel the opposite. I know because like when their face is tan, that um, scarring and the acne doesn't stand out as much, but I've just found that my acne, or not my acne, my scarring tans evenly with my skin. Like not that it gets even, but like when my skin gets more tan, my acne scars get more tan. So like, what's the point <laughs> in doing it? Um, and so now I'm here, I am almost 22. I have awful scarring on my cheeks and um, people point it out. People ask me about it. I don't like it. I'm really insecure about it. And which is stupid because I know there's nothing wrong with it. Like I can't control this. And you know, I was taking good care of my skin when it started. I took really good care of my skin all the way through this journey and I'm still taking great care of my skin. And I wish there was something I could do about it. I wish there was like an ending to this story where I was like, and this was the solution that worked the best for me. And this is what you should try. But truly like the, when I drink water, I eat good and I work out, not work out, but when I stay active, uh, that's when I find that my skin is the best at healing the scarring that it has. So that's kind of my journey. I am my um, camera kind of shut off halfway in between. So I'm not sure exactly how long this video is. Um, but if you want to read more about my acne journey, I've written about it a couple times on my blog. You can go visit that at katesimmonsbeauty.com. Um, if you don't follow me on social media, I recommend that you do. On Instagram, it is at katesimmons with two S's. And um, on Twitter, it's at the flawed goddess with one S. I don't tweet about beauty or skincare things. I just think I'm funny on Twitter. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, please subscribe to my channel because why not? Like, why not? If you think that you might be interested in what I have to say. Um, also, please give this video a big thumbs up and let me know what you thought of it. If you like this kind of content or if you were like, this is totally boring, you shouldn't do this. And that's really all I have for this week. Hopefully next week, I'm either going to have some more... No, I'm either going to do another eco-friendly video like my previous one, or I might make the MLM video of why I choose not to support MLMs right now. So we'll see. We'll see what I'm in the mood to film tomorrow or later or next week. We'll find out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, please subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Guess who still needs a haircut? My puppy. Say bye. Say bye bye. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Look, who's that? What? Who's that? Who's that? Is that you? That's you. Oh my goodness, you need a haircut. I'm about to go give him a bath right now. That's enough. Get us over here with mamas. Roy, it's time to lay down. <clears throat> do you see this little tuft of fur that is my dog i'm taking him to get a haircut this week so i have a couple more videos to hi bud hi okay side note does anyone else's dog just constantly lick like is there something wrong with him like do i need to do something differently like am i doing something wrong but let, let me know <laughs> all right all right buddy you gotta get down yeah, you gotta get down. No, you gotta get... He does not want to get down. Alright, come on, bud. Come on. Okay, let's get down. Let's get down. Come on.